some reactions react badly if there is water present. You need to know how to use anhydrous technique, that is dry technique. This video will show you several steps in using anhydrous technique in preparing a Grignard reaction synthesis. Anhydrous technique is a series of techniques that you will need to use when water will cause a problem with your reaction. You'll actually be using this for the Grignard reaction, but there are many others that need anhydrous technique. The first thing to dry, actually, is the air. And the way to keep the air dry is to use this. It's called, oddly enough, a drying tube. This is the way that air enters your apparatus, and you fill it with an anhydrous salt, which keeps it um, dry. That is, it removes the moisture from the atmosphere. Take a little bit of a cotton ball, about a quarter of a cotton ball, and poke that down to the corner of the drying tube. Then take some anhydrous calcium chloride, open the cap here, and using the tube as a scoop, oops, collect some calcium chloride inside the tube itself. I've managed to spill here. You probably will do the same thing. You'll need to clean that up. Once you have filled it as much as that, put the cap on the calcium chloride. If you don't, it's going to try and dry the entire room. And then take a second piece of cotton, roll it up, and poke it in to fill the other end of the tube. This will now dry any air that passes through it, and it will stop moist air from getting inside the apparatus. You will also need a Kleisen head. A Kleisen head is a Y adapter, so it allows two channels into one. We have two different styles. It doesn't matter which one you have. One of them has two ground glass joints. The other one has only one ground glass joint and a threaded joint. You'll be covering the end of those with a serum cap. If you have one of these, take, in fact, a large serum cap, and it fits over like that. The serum cap is where you'll be putting a needle shortly. If you've got two wide ones, you'll need to use a narrow one. You'll notice I've taken my gloves off for this because it's a bit of a struggle. And get that over, pulling it over with the pipe, with the spatula, so that it fits over like that. So in both cases, I've now got one of the two orifices plugged with a serum cap. Another useful thing in anhydrous technique is to actually oven dry your glassware. So you will have taken some of your glassware and popped it in the oven for a short overnight. Try and assemble the glassware while it is still warm, not burning hot, but while it is still warm to assure that any water that was adhering to the glass surface has been driven off by the heat. You will need to take a, the Kleisen head that you've attached something to, and it will go in here, like so, and then be clamped in a three-finger clamp, like that. You will then put your air condenser in here and stop the top end of the air condenser with the drying tube. You can do that kind of setup while the glassware is still warm. That's a good idea. This is now sealed off from the atmosphere, except for this entrance here. And moisture from the air will get stopped by the drying tube. Another part of anhydrous technique is being careful how you introduce your chemicals to the setup. You're going to be using a syringe and a needle, which will exclude air, to introduce um, ether and solution into your setup. Your TA will have given you a syringe, so you can pop it out of the container like that, and also a needle. You need to be really careful with needles and syringes. Hospitals use them to get chemicals inside people all the time. They are a super route of entry, so please be very careful how you actually handle them. 
the needle actually comes inside a hard plastic case and it's a friction fit onto the end of the syringe like this. Now holding the end of the needle, you can pull the cap off like this. This is sharp, please don't point it at anyone else or more importantly, to yourself. You will be using the needle through a ring. If you look closely, there's a circle in the middle of the serum cap. And plunge the needle through that. You'll be injecting chemicals through the needle into the reagent mixture. When you have finished using your uh, syringe setup, you should cover the needle. Now, be careful. Don't hold it like this. I'm pointing that needle at my hand. It's a great way to stab myself. Instead, hold it this way, so I'm pointing the needle away from myself. Put the cap back on. Over at the TA station, you will find a bright yellow Sharps disposal bucket. Once you have your syringe ready to dispose of, the needle itself goes into the Sharps bin. That's this thing here. If, for some reason, the needle has come off, you can just pop it in like that. If you don't want to be pulling at it, that's fine, too. Put the needle and syringe into the keyhole here and just pop it up like that. The needle goes into the Sharps container. The syringe itself does not go in there. It goes into the bucket right next to it labeled for syringes. There are several steps to anhydrous technique. You use dry chemicals. You use oven dried glassware. You use a drying tube, you assemble the glassware quickly, and you use syringes to introduce materials rather than opening the container. After watching this video, you should understand anhydrous technique in microscale glassware.